My name is Teresa D. Dunbar, and this is my second year as principal of Henry H. Nash Elementary School. Being a principal is a wonderful way to affect change in the world. Children are going to go out into the world and do great things, my children, and I get to be a part of that. I love my kids, and better than that, my kids love me. Principal leadership is just absolutely critically important. You can't overestimate how important it is. And it's a cliche, but I say it all the time. We have no good schools without good principals. It simply doesn't happen. My name is Carrie Purcell, and I've been the principal at Harvard Park for six years. I became a principal because I want to change the world, really and I believed that I had the skill set to help teachers become better teachers so that students could be more successful in the classroom and in life. The Wallace Foundation is a national charity. It is focused exclusively on improving the lives of kids, particularly the educational lives of kids. We discovered that the quality of the principal is the single most important reason why teachers want to work in that school. And it makes you think, how is it that we are preparing these people? Can we do a better job of giving them the tools that they'll really need to succeed in this school? And then once they get the job, how do we continue to support them? In most states, there is no leadership development system in place. It's pretty much left to uh, each of those individual institutions who prepare them uh, for um, their principalship. In these tough economic times, it will be very easy for districts to say, sure, I know school leadership is important, but I just can't afford to do that now. My response to that is, you can't afford not to. What's at stake is uh, the future of this country because we cannot continue to be um, failing you know, millions of children, literally, and think we're going to be competitive either, either nationally or internationally. So if America is going to remain competitive and successful, then we have got to take our education system to a new level. We won't do that if we don't get great leadership. It just won't happen. Before I became principal here at Nash School, there was a real struggle with leadership. The school had six principals over a five-year period. And we've been at the bottom of state school testing for a number of years. As a result of this, we find ourselves in a very scary place. If our scores don't continue to rise and rise dramatically, we may be facing closure. Six years ago when I came to Harvard Park, the building was in crisis on a number of levels. You're new at this, but you can do it. Go. Good. Teacher morale was extremely low, um, behavior was out of control, and test scores were in the gutter. Now we have a 92% attendance rate, and over time our test scores have improved dramatically. Using hot air balloons to raise in two days. Yeah, there. Sixty-eight words. Oh my goodness! Everybody needs to know the core business and be able to recognize quality teaching when they see it, and be able to support and help their teachers become better teachers. Today's principals have to be entrepreneurial. They have to be extraordinarily hard workers. They have to be very, very smart and first and foremost instructional leaders. We're talking about regular, periodic. Uh, visits by the principal to the classroom. We're talking about reviewing lesson plans and getting engaged and involved in instruction for the students. You have to be in the classrooms to see the teachers. You have to talk to the students and be in the room to make sure they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. How do you know that Joey's mother is Mrs. Stadahar is uh, one of the strongest teachers that I have. She is a teacher who really, really sets her goals up well, explains to her students what's supposed to happen, and makes sure that they're getting what they're supposed to get. How do you know? 
Give me three examples. That's a great classroom. She's just absolutely one of my best all day long. There are some other rooms and some other people on this floor and on the upper grade uh, floors who do the exact same thing. But when you have only 30 to 35 percent, not even 50 percent, doing this every day all day long, that's where the problem comes in. You don't automatically know how to be a good principal necessarily, just as a physician who's trained would not necessarily know how to be a good doctor. There are uh, direct responsibilities uh, that states have to support leadership development. Uh, every state must step back and evaluate um, the kind of support or the lack of support they've given uh, to this critical position. For starters, um, we've got a lot of really wretched school leadership programs run by colleges around the country. So I think policymakers have to decide that they should not allow the state universities to become sort of these mills that just certify anybody who sir shows up enough times to qualify. We produce way too many uh, people with school administrator licenses That's, and part of that is because we give teachers extra money to get administrative credentials even though they're not ever going to be an administrator. A district can grow their own and that means to identify and support the development of teachers to become principals. Because of funding, the students are grouped together. Some districts have done that and then have been able to set up their own training programs. Your teachers of today could be your leaders of tomorrow. The first thing that I did when I became chancellor, the first major initiative that I did was to launch a leadership training program for new principals. Here in Illinois, our State Board of Education and our Board of Higher Education are working closely together with university preparation programs. Uh, we're finding more districts partnering with their universities. We're looking to have more uh, residencies or longer internship experiences for our novice principals. Just having a network of support yeah, that helps them with the challenges that they face, that that's enormously helpful. It's not just about training when we talk about uh, the success of principals. It's also ongoing support for them, bringing people together for different kinds of conversations. And so we need ways to support that. There's a very big role for school districts here, creating residency programs or, or programs where these people can become assistant principals or interns under unusually effective principals in the district. So it's about building your own cadre of school leaders. One of my greatest passions is to build um, leadership within those people that I work with, both teacher leaders and uh, future principal leaders. Mm -hmm. And gave back feedback right away. So Friday I responses. I love that idea. I think the whole um, idea of feedback is so important. And if it's not immediate, it's not worth giving. Having high quality principles just doesn't happen overnight. It's something that is part of a planful act that the district takes. And then you know how we post data. Yep. But you know I think evaluation of principles is really important. A lot of states, a lot of policies don't address the issues of fair and equitable evaluation of principles work. One good example of um, innovation that's occurred in recent years is the uh, administrator evaluation program that was developed at the Vanderbilt University faculty uh, level. The principal evaluation system provides direct performance uh, indicators and uh, it provides for uh, a growth pattern for principals over time. Every decision we make in this building is around data. Brian Starr. 20 to 50? Mm -hmm. I thought it were a jump. <laughs> What'd you say? I thought it were a jump. That's awesome. Yeah. Ow. Oh my gosh, 9F. 105, 149. We test our kids every month on how many words that they can read per minute. And you know what? Not to get into your private business, but if you would come to school more often, your score would go lickety split up. Mm -hmm. I want my kids to know their number and when they've shown improvement. 42 to 67, good job. Did everybody go up? Yeah. 133, that's like fifth grade. Good job, Daryl. Good job, Daryl. Are you making fun of me? If I were advising the states on uh, data, what I would tell them to do is create a K to 16 
database, tying in the colleges, because you want to understand why kids in their second year or third year of college, where they were underprepared for the challenges they meet, and so that you can then adjust your high school curriculum to address those issues. And so for states in particular, a, a statewide K-16 to database is very, very important. This is the moment. This is the time when America really needs to have principals that are well prepared to handle the challenges of the 21st century. Take away seven? Yes. Every single day we see classrooms, we see whole schools where good leadership and good teaching has taken even kids who nobody thought could achieve to extraordinarily high levels of achievement. The most important thing in school reform is school leadership because that's where education is going to go on inside a school building. Parents don't send their kids to a system or a district or even to an individual teacher. Parents send their children to a school and school leadership is the critical variable. I think why children historically struggle is not their lack of ability, it's our low expectations of what they can do and leaders who have been complacent about challenging the status quo. If we collectively, as a country, can get great principles into all of our schools, you're going to see our children do extraordinary things.